Hey, how's it going, Joker fam? It's your boy, Haha ha Joker, aka the Black Joker, back at it again with another map video for you guys. So, today we're going to jump into some Ultimate Team. We got some new flashbacks, we got some team updates, got not a lot to go over. It's probably going to be a real quick video, but we got a few things that have dropped and a little bit to talk about. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the flashbacks. I've already looked at the flashbacks, I know who they are, and Honestly, I'm not impressed, but again, for you guys that don't really grind the game like that, stuff like that, I'm going to put the content out for you. But as you guys should know, on this channel, we just give our honest opinion. We don't really hold anything back. There's not a lot of flashbacks in this game that are good, that stand out. Um, there's no exception to these. It's kind of the same as the heavyweights. There's probably maybe three, maybe three. Three might be pushing it too, but... There might be three heavyweight players that you can get that stand on their own. But with that being said, unless the heavyweights have a power-up or something else that's in the game, such as, like, um, how should I say it? A card that you can put in a heavyweight set, but then he'll get another power-up later on. So, Tyron Smith is a good left tackle for the Cowboys. He has a heavyweight, uh, heavyweight card. If he gets something else, then, yeah, there's a use of that heavyweight card. Perfect example, Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa has a Harvest card out. He has a heavyweight. Now, his heavyweight before obviously wasn't that good because of where we were at in Madden. But now there might be some use to his heavyweight card now, which Joey Bosa might end up being on my team at some point in time because he has very good finesse. And as we all know, for whatever reason, finesse ends are just better this year than power move um, ends. And we see that through D-Law, perfect example. He is constantly in my backfield. Anytime I've played somebody who has D-Law, this man is constantly in my backfield. Can't do nothing about it. Sometimes I double team him and he'll get like that, that, like that two man, like whatever shed he gets. It's ridiculous. And he's like an 89 overall, it's dumb. And I don't like it. And I'm I'm dreading the fact that he's possibly going to get another power-up. It's it's going to be very annoying. But, <clears throat> I digress. To this point, <clears throat> flashbacks are typically the same thing. So we have um, Tremaine Johnson and Robert Woods. Now, there's a few of these players you can power up. You know, for Dolphins fans, there's myself, there's Lamar Miller. If you want to, you know, obviously have him on your team, there's like a Dolphins theme team or whatever the case is. You know, Keep Tlaib, he has a power up. There's a use for him. But the ones that don't have power ups and their stats are not even good either, it, it's a problem, right? So, Tremaine Johnson, perfect example of what I'm talking about. 6'2", good height for a corner. I like that. But 87 speed, 87 acceleration, 88 agility, 87 jump, 91 play rec, 86 man, 91 zone, 89 press. Now, if we just go down the list, let's go to the lowest tier corner I have, which will probably be Darius Slay. We'll just say Jason Seahorn for this video at least. Jason Seahorn is a 90 overall corner, right? Tremaine Johnson is just one overall better, but his speed is nowhere as close. Acceleration was close. Agility is the same. His jump is plus one. Play rec is better. The man is the same. Zone is way better. And press is only plus two. Now, as you guys, like I've said in previous videos, and it's going to keep being said, and you guys should obviously know this by now, theme diamonds are going to get power-ups. It's just the way it is. So Seahorn is going to get a legend card at some point. Tremaine Johnson's not getting anything. Even if you even if you were to put him on a Rams theme team, to be honest with you, this Tremaine Johnson, I don't even think would be that good on a Rams theme team because once again, you cannot power him up. So players like this that you can't power up are, as far as I'm concerned, will hurt your team more than help. Because there's no there's a cap to how good they can be on your team. When you power them up, there is no cap. At least 
there's a chance of them getting a better card. If Tremaine Johnson, if he gets a, another card out, then you'll have to get rid of this Tremaine Johnson unless they come out with a power-up for him, which, as we know from last year, not every card that wasn't a power-up is going to get a power-up. It's just the way it is. Tremaine Johnson might fall through the cracks, and you, he might not get a power-up. It's just the way it is. So, uh, once again, Tremaine Johnson put out a card that nobody's going to pick up just the way it is robert woods 89 speed 87 jump 92 catch 87 catch in traffic 86 spec 87 short 89 mid and 86 deep robert woods can be powered up but once again he's another receiver that's going to fall through the cracks there's too many other better receivers out there that you know what i'm saying like that are just way better than him right so AJ Green is probably my lowest tier receiver I have that I actually might use. And I would rather have AJ Green any day of the week than have Robert Woods. AJ Green has good size being a 6'4. Alright, speed not might be top tier, but speed is only like a small part of it compared to like here's the thing. In Madden, it's very hard if you're not running like one play touchdowns, it's very rare. That you can catch a ball and outrun somebody. Very rare. Unless it's a deep route and you obviously rack it and you can outrun them, cool. But it's very rare that you can run a slant and burn somebody. It's very rare that you can run a route like a post or something like that and burn somebody. Unless it's like a cover two beater or a cover three beater where he's going to be wide open. You don't really outrun people in this game anymore. All right, like everybody in at this point in time, everybody's too fast. Everybody's got a Dion or a Night Train or somebody fast is going to hawk you down. It's just the way it is. So it's very rare that you catch passes in stride and can straight outrun somebody. So in my opinion, speed speed does have its usefulness, but at the end of the day catching traffic in my honest opinion also has its usefulness there's a lot of times you're going to have to throw into some traffic or if there is no traffic again i could be running a post and the post can be open but in this game somebody can click on and then that corner is at like 99 speed and they get over to you real quick so you need to have a receiver that has good catching traffic which is what i try my best to pry in my offense with as much as possible is with catching traffic all right now Randy Moss doesn't have the best catch in traffic but Randy Moss is Randy Moss all right and you know Torrey Holt same thing which is why he plays on the outside he only gets like freaking either streaks fades um comeback routes he doesn't go in the middle of the field so his catching traffic is not as much of a problem as Herman Moore who I run my post routes with or or my inside routes with or aj green who also if somebody gets tired or whatever the case is i run my inside routes with aj green robert woods is the exact same detriment as my in my opinion there's no need for him on your team i don't care i don't even know what other teams he played for besides the bills but again this is a card that ea puts out that nobody's going to pick up because there's just too many better options at the wide receiver position would Robert Woods get some crazy freaking 94, 95 card? Doubtful. And it, even if he does, there's still going to be better receivers than Robert Woods. It's just the way it is. So, this flashback promo, not, not happy about it. It's not good. There's no point in this promo. I really do wish they probably would have put out some limited times in these kind of things. Kind of like how they do for the legends. They put out, um, except for this weekend, but I mean the weekend that just passed. But they put out limited time players and two legends. I feel like they do, should do something like that for stuff like this, like flashbacks, like give you like these two little flashbacks, and then give you like a, I don't know, another flashback player that's a ninety-two overall or something like that. I don't know. It's something to give you a reason to rip packs and want to pull something. Because I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody ripping packs for no, for no damn Robert Woods 
and Tremaine Johnson. I nobody in a right mind. So to me that it is what it is, all right? But flashbacks this week, trash, plain and simple. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into the new pickup we have, right? So we got Barry Sanders. Now, this Barry Sanders, it, it was hard for me to get, man. It really was. So by the time I found this out, I was already trying to get him and stuff like that. So, I broke, all right? I I pulled like a $50 bundle. Now, hear me out. I know I preach, there's no point in pulling bundles, this and that, yada, 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 there's no point, right? Okay, here's my thing. I wanted this Barry Sanders so bad because Barry Sanders is my favorite NFL player ever, all right? Now, there's a lot of players nowadays that, despite their height, they are big-time players. Kyle, I mean, Kyle Murray's one of them. Um, Russell Wilson's another. A whole bunch of players. But Barry Sanders, in my honest opinion, was, like, the most known person for doing what he could do and only being five foot eight. Like, if Barry Sanders was walking around somewhere, you probably wouldn't even recognize him. All right? He, he don't look like an NFL athlete, but damn it, he was, and he was the best at being elusive and everything, so he's my favorite running back, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop 50 on it, it is what it is, I wasn't planning on pulling him or nothing like that, I just wanted the collectibles, which I got, so I got all the collectibles, I put my coins into the rest that I didn't have, and we got them. now. Joker, what well, you say you were gonna pull packs, you said packs are trash, this and that. Here's the thing, right? I pulled that pack to get this one player. Now keep in mind, the blitz promo, I might pull packs because they the blitz promo, they're supposed to be cheaper packs. Maybe a twenty dollar pack or whatever the case is. I'll do those. But I mean bundles, fifty dollar bundles, hundred dollar bundles, my my fingers are not worth it. Because I've had conversation with a few of my friends that that have pull bundles and they come out with 200k and some training for a hundred dollars that's ridiculous that's stupid which is why i would never pull that now despite that yes i dropped 50 to get barry but it was to get barry and i was going to compensate for the rest of it with my coins i wasn't expecting to pull the full berry out of the pack or nothing like that because I know my pack luck is trash it's just the way it is got a little bit of training also from it and I had some training left over so I was able to power them up too I had to sell some people quick sell some people and stuff like that so yeah but it's probably gonna be the last time I do that I'm not probably it is the last time I'm gonna do that I'm never paying $50 for packs in this game ever all right Twenty dollars for the twenty dollars for the blitz promo. It's probably the most I will go. They have coins for it because you guys know how they did it last year. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a time limit. You got to do it quick, get it quick, whatever the case is. Yada yada yada. I will do those as long as it doesn't exceed twenty bucks. That's the most I'm willing to pay for packs. The most I'm willing to pay for packs. The weeklies are five bucks. That's nothing. I don't have a problem with that. But the most I'm willing to exceed is 20 bucks and nothing more because this game is not worth anything more than the 60 bucks you pay for it and the 20 bucks extra i guess if you want to do a little like blitz promos or if they have a 20 dollar packs or whatever because i know they have the great iron packs for like 20 bucks like five great iron packs for 20 bucks fine 20 bucks ain't really a lot in for a lot of people but 50 50 bucks that's a whole that's a full take of gas for some people and you're willing to put it into this game for packs that you might not even get something out of that's stupid all right that's not worth it and that's ridiculous but like i said i did it once and it ain't gonna happen again and for me to get my favorite player to ever play the game to me i i thought it was worth it so that's what it is 
But those are my opinions on Barry plays well. He plays very good. He still fumbles. But again, I play games with, if you guys haven't seen it, I did a debut with Eric Dickerson. Barry fumbles, but so does Eric. All right. So it, it don't really much matter. I've, I've seen Eric Dickerson fumble four times in a game. I've seen other her pe other people who use them, and he fumbles a lot. Not a lot, but he fumbles like four or five times in the game. It's ridiculous, all right? So it is what it is. But, yeah, he still fumbles, but I notice a lot with Barry. When you get that round the corner turns with him on runs, oh, he outruns people. It's like bad. He, get, he pulls away good. So Barry does play well. Just understand that. If you go head up with Tillman, he gonna put the ball on the ground. So be careful with that. Hold RB or whatever you need to do. But he will put that ball on the ground, that's for sure. But he can't outrun people. Quick. I've I've done it plenty of times to Pat Tillman too. I'll freaking run a stretch, get to that angle, and then as soon as Tillman, if he gets on that same angle, if he's not trying to like take that angle and he comes at me like that. Oh, I could round him and I'm gone. So like, he, he, Barry can get loose, man. So they, I think it was a good pickup. But like I said, I don't plan on, I don't plan on doing another fifty dollar bundle ever again. All right, like I said, it's not worth it. And like I said, I did it once just to get my favorite player. But outside of that, Barry's on the squad. He plays really well. We're in the legend tier for head to head, so expect some gameplay on that. You'll probably see Barry Sanders doing some work. And again, the flashbacks. It I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not really happy about how the flashbacks have been. The heavyweights have been. Honestly, like stuff doesn't get good in Madden until Tuesday if you play weekend league and you get your rewards. And then if they drop house rules. But other than that, if it's not house rules and you don't play weekend league, stuff doesn't get good in Madden until Saturday when Legends drop. Because heavyweights are typically trash. Flashbacks are trash. Veterans have always been trash. So, eh, whatever. Like I said, it is what it is. But that's just my thoughts on flashbacks. You guys let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about the flashbacks, about the promos that EA drops on Mondays, Tuesdays, whatever the case is. If you guys like the veterans or if you like the heavyweights or you like the flashbacks, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel. And as always, man, to the next one. Peace.